She was in Monarchy. But now she's a sponsor in the world. Yeah. 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 You okay? Because we're starting. <laughs> As I said, when the red light comes on, we're starting, so we will start. Welcome to the open mayor and council meeting, and um, we, I may have a partner up here if he wants to walk up. You're welcome. I'm <laughs> here. Not you. <laughs> So at this time, look at your cell phones, please put them on vibrate to take off the sound. Um, and also please refrain from texting because it is discourteous, it's disruptive, and could be construed as a violation of the Open Public Meetings Act. So at this time, we will begin when Kevin moves his head. Um, and roll call. Mayor Schwager. Here. Councilman Biao. Here. Councilman Knapp. Here. Councilman Kamala. Here. Councilman Levy. Here. Councilman Pignatelli. Here. Councilman Talamini. Here. So I ask everyone to stand, uh, to salute the flag, and to remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. This meeting is being held in accordance with the open public meetings law duly announced, advertised, and posted in the municipal building. And um, just for everybody's um, information, there is something on the agenda presentation for former fire chiefs that is going to be held in January, July, July, July. not January, <laughs> July 11th. I'm just going to give my mayor's report before we do the police because um, there's some information that everybody might want to hear. Um, we have a new senior citizen director, Ariel Preciado. She's, and I'm sure John Bialy, our councilman, will talk about the senior activities. She's already started. There's a July calendar already set up, and she has trips planned already. Um, and there is an August 2nd bus trip to the Sands Casino. A lot of the seniors were requesting a trip to the casino. Also, as a reminder, at the Oakland Rehab Center on Breakneck Road, they have monthly uh, concerts that are free to everyone. And uh, there was one last week, and there's the next one is on July 19th. It's the Rock and Roll Night. It's a live bands that play. And then on August 16th, it's the Oldies Night. And that's, uh, they serve refreshments. You bring your own chairs, and it's free. So if you have, it's a nice night, you have nothing to do, please go up to the Oakland Rehab Center. Congratulations to all the graduates. Last week I attended with some of the councilmen. Uh, Valley Middle School graduation. Congratulations to our eighth graders that are no longer eighth graders. They're going on to high school and to the Ramapo and Indian Hills high school graduates. Last week, that's why I wanted you to hear this. Last week on Friday, some of the council people and myself, and uh, led by is uh, with Fred Fury, see here? He uh, was our tour guide. We took a bus tour on Route 287. Right here. Is he here? Frank, you led the, you led the bus tour. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. He kept us safe. We took a representatives from New Jersey DOT to ride uh, 287, where we have, unfortunately, we have many uh, truck accidents, and some of our fire department have been hurt after they have attended a, a, uh, an accident scene. So I don't know what will happen. It was a good meeting. 
Um, thank you for everyone for who attended and rode the bus. Um, we also talked about West Oakland Avenue and the traffic light on West Oakland Avenue and 202 and the prohibition of the right turn even on red because it's over a railroad track. So um, they said they would look into it. They talked about wanting to just take down the sign. We said we tried, then somebody put it up, then they took it down, then somebody put it up. So there's no right turn um, at red, but they're going to look into it. So it's something, they're also going to look, in spite of what Frank Fury has told me, they're also going to look at the green arrow, the left turn green arrow, maybe at the beginning of the light. Frank, you may want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and I have discussed this. Now he's opposed to this. <laughs> it's worth a try, isn't it? That Frank? particular light, believe it or not, even though 202 is a county road, that intersection and that light is controlled by the state because of 287. So we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see. Tonight, it's very exciting. We are hiring three new police officers. I'm so happy. And also, Station Park is going to pre a presentation. And Nancy, I see you're here. Are you making a presentation from the Environmental Commission? A very brief one. A very brief one, but another one. And also, very important to remember, I did a reverse 911 last week. 202 is going to be congested over the next two months. Hopefully it will be finished by the end of the summer. We have our fingers crossed. PSCNG Public Service is working on a gas main on 202 between Franklin Avenue and Navajo. The road will not be closed, but our fine officers are directing traffic. And so I ask you, please drive cautiously. Funny. Be courteous. Be careful of the officers directing traffic. And most of all, please be patient. It has to be done. We don't have a choice. And um, the sooner when they get it done, the sooner we'll get the road open again. So just everybody, just stay calm and ride carefully. And with that, I will um, now entertain a motion for resolution 18239, which is authorizing the hiring of police officer Patrick Fitzgerald effective July 2nd, 2018, and his salary shall be $40,289 in accordance with the current PBA contract. So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bial. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamal. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pimentel. Yes. Councilman Chalamet. Yes. Resolution 18240 authorized the hiring of police officer Jacob Martin, effective July 2nd, 2018, and the salary shall be $40,289 in accordance with the current PBA contract. So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Tallini. Yes. Resolution 18241, authorizing the hiring of police officer Tim McDonough, effect McDonough, McDonough. I'll get it right. Done. Effective July 2nd, 2018, uh, because of his training and his education that led up to the training, his salary shall be at step number one, which starts at $47,788 in accordance with the current PBA contract. So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamal. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Tallini. Yes. Now. We have two, and Councilman Knapp, you wanted to, um... No, I'm good. You, you do your, oh. Well, you can give out the, you want to give out the certificate, you said. Um, okay. <coughs> As the uh, chair of the police committee. Uh, no. Public safety. Public safety committee. I'm getting everything wrong tonight. Well, luckily you have me here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do one at a time. We'll start with Patrick Fitzgerald, because I can pronounce that name easily. <laughs> Hi. I'll read it, then you'll give it out. Uh, the Bible, and who would you like to hold the Bible? Uh, my mother. Mom? Here you go, Mom. <laughs> you ready? Are you left hand of the Bible. 
Nina and um, follow this is I, Patrick Fitzgerald. I, Patrick Fitzgerald. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the, Consti the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. Are you listening? You don't think I'm listening. <laughs> that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will okay. bear true allegiance. Faith it, and allegiance. To the same. That's good. And the governments. And the governments. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. Impartially. And partially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. Of the office of. In the office of. Police officer. Police officer. In the borough of Oakland. In the borough of Oakland. According to the best of my ability. In accordance to the best of my ability. And are, are you okay? So help me God. So help me God. That's it. You're its official. Congratulations. <laughs> Jacob Martin. Pat. You have to sign. Oh. That's his job. <laughs> now you can bring up whoever you want. Who wants to come up? Who wants to come up? <laughs> dad? That's my dad. My mom's not thinking about It's okay. Let dad come. Dad will hold the Bible. Left hand on the Bible. Right hand. Ready? Ready. I, Jacob Martin. I, Jacob Martin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true, true faith, faith and allegiance to the same. And the governments. And the governments. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in the state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. The office of. The office of. Police officer in the borough of Oakland. Police officer in the borough of Oakland. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Well, welcome. <laughs> He's not here. Because I pronounced his name wrong. The whole family could come out. I'll, I'll bring them all up. We've been waiting for this. I know. I know. I know. Come on. Oh, that's you. Yeah. Come sit with me. Is he going to hold the Bible? Yes, I am. Oh. <laughs> Beyonce. 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 <laughs> okay, left hand on the Bible, right hand. Ready? Yep. Mom. I. Hi. I to McDonough. I to McDonough. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution oh. of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And the governments. And the governments. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. Of the office of police officer of, in the borough of Oakland. Of the office of police officer in the borough of Oakland. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Now you have to sign the If you don't sign it, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Now at this time, many people stop leaving. 
Well, you could stay and listen to our council meeting, but it's televised. Well, and you could stay and listen to all the presentations we have tonight. But if you'd like to leave, this is a good time. My name is Kevin Marr. I know some of you up there already, but if you don't know me, I serve on the Environmental Commission in town as well as our Sustainable Jersey Green team. Uh, and what I'm here for tonight is to just go over and brief you on a significant upcoming grant opportunity from the state. Two weeks ago, I was in Newark at the New Jersey Transportation Planning Authority where I was attending a workshop and a conference they were holding on. So why weren't you on the bus with us? <laughs> uh, attending their workshop on electric vehicle infrastructure and planning for electric vehicles in your community. And the key takeaway that I got from that, which I want to present to you, is that after the Volkswagen emissions cheating lawsuit was resolved, the state of New Jersey will be getting about $77 million from that. A little under $14 million of that is going to be set aside for grants to be given away to municipalities and others uh, for electric vehicle purchases of the automotives themselves <coughs> and also of charging station and affiliated infrastructure. So looking ahead, my understanding was we're looking at a period of maybe six to ten months until that grant funding becomes available. Um, I was told less than a year, but not soon, so I'm just throwing that out there. Um, and as we get closer to that, I just want everyone on the council to be aware of the fact that the green team uh, will be asking for a resolution to apply for that grant because we have a lot of ideas of ways to use that grant money in our town. Um, whether it's in up something upcoming like Station Park or retrofitting an existing lot, or perhaps if after a new fleet inventory we think that there's room to replace some of our petrochemical vehicles with an electric vehicles to reduce fuel cost over... But are you also cycle. saying the grant would help us to set up a charging station? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding was that it's going to be pretty flexible as long as it's related to electric vehicles, obviously, and whether or not... You, uh, so the borough could say, we want to replace inventory vehicles with electric vehicles. Or we could say, we want to put in public charging stations in municipal plaza there's going to be flexibility in how the grant funds can be used, as long as it's directly related to things like that. So I just want everyone to be aware of that. In a little under a year, the green team may be putting out a resolution uh, asking for permission to apply for this grant funding on behalf of what we do with Sustainable Jersey. And I talked to Pat about that last night at the uh, green team meeting. And I think what you said last night, too, which I, I'm not aware of, because I'm sure you can look at a car and say whether it's electric yeah. or not. I have no idea. And, and you said there are numerous vehicles yes, in town uh, that are electrical. That's the key takeaway for even a smaller community like ours, as opposed to some place like Hackensack or Glenrock. A lot of times when communities look at electric vehicle infrastructure, they go, okay, if we of put course. this in, can we grow a user base? Nice. We're fortunate from the environmental standpoint of looking at putting an electric vehicle infrastructure. We already have the Thank user you. base. We're already growing. The flow area, this area of Burton County, we have plenty of electric vehicle drivers. In fact, the numbers have increased by close to 10,000 in the last six years, numbers I pulled from NJTPA. 
So the user base is already here. We're behind the ball in providing them that service of electric vehicle charging stations at our public locations. And uh, you also mentioned last night um, um, for a developer, if they put in one charging station, it, it counts for three? Yes, well, that, those were sort of what was fun at the, the conference was they were giving you creative ideas to help encourage the private sectors in your community to adopt electric vehicle charging stations. And some of that is adjustments to zoning or planning ordinances. And you can say, uh, if your new development contains an electric vehicle parking space, you can count that as three or four traditional parking spaces mm -hmm. for zoning oh. or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can get creative in how you want the private sector to kind of, or encourage that development in the private sector. Any other questions? Yeah, um, actually I had attended the Green Film Festival this past fall, and there were two representatives from Tesla that mm -hmm. were present. And I had asked the question of the Tesla people of what would it take to have Tesla come in and put in a supercharging station? Mm -hmm. With the thinking that if you, we have a major highway coming through here, if you put a supercharging station in or one or two to drive some business to the downtown area, has anybody from the green team reached out to Tesla to ask them? Actually, yes. Last year during our previous recertification cycle, I did reach out to Tesla. Um, at the time, it was not feasible because of the cost differences. Uh, Tesla superchargers, the technology behind them is fantastic, but you're looking at $200,000 to install one and the equivalency because of how rapidly that electricity moves to them, their direct current, you need to do a lot of modifications. Well, we would ask Tesla to install, not us. Right, but, but the cost, that was less than time to for the green. Whereas your normal class two charger, which is usually around 240 volts, um, anywhere between twenty dollars and $40,000. Uh, significant cost savings. Although that doesn't necessarily matter for us if we're using grant funds, but and it's it's so yeah, Tesla super superchargers. I would love them in the community. They're the highest end chargers you can get. We have Teslas in the community. Um, if the council's interested, I can look into that for you again. But I was just looking more at the traditional class two chargers. Okay. The reason I ask that, as you stated, there's a lot of Teslas in the neighborhood yes. and the surrounding towns. It would certainly be a boon if we were able to get one in the downtown area and drive the business into Oakland. Absolutely. Especially if Tesla would pay for it. Mm -hmm. but, okay. I would encourage the council to support the Green Team's uh, effort in this. Uh, you know, we've done several things, anti-idling uh, mm -hmm. uh, ordinance and, and other ordinances, uh, encouraging sustainability. And uh, I think it would help us with our, our rating for New Jersey sustainability uh, yeah. rating. Uh, yeah. Electric vehicle infrastructure would provide permanent points towards our sustainability. Wow. Didn't you say 40 points? Yeah, uh, 15 for two separate things, but yeah, so that would come up to you. So that would really help us, Mayor, and... and, and yeah. Oh, absolutely. We have perfect, perfect spots in uh, municipal building, municipal plaza. <laughs> I have a question for you. Sure. The supercharging station from Tesla, yes. does that just do one vehicle at a time, or... Yes. Can that do multiple vehicles? It's one charger per parking space, yeah. But it's quicker. We just yes, drove down to Maryland um, two weekends ago, and in a lot of the rest stops there, they have charging stations in the rest mm -hmm. stops now. So you're going to see that more and more. Yeah. We don't. We don't have. <laughs> Mayor, I agree with Pe Council Pe Pignatelli. I mean, this is really we're at an interesting juncture right now with electrification. Yes. And, and I clearly would support moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll put if on the, the agenda then, Mayor. Um, Eric, we may be able to talk to uh, CAC about making that part of our streetscapes. I think that'd be a great idea to incorporate that. Appreciate That's our grant writing company. Thank you. Person charging Thank the you. car. Yeah, appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Mm. Would anyone else like to speak? Good evening. I'm Nancy Krauss from 22 Hickory Drive in Oakland. I'm here um, as a member of the Environmental Commission and I heard a little story last week at the carnival about was a pizza box recyclable? We discussed, yes. <laughs> so I'm here to answer that question officially. <laughs> and um, a pizza, a dirty pizza box is not recyclable. It should go in your garbage. But what you could do if the top is clean, because the pizza is usually on the bottom, rip off the top, and yes, you can recycle the clean paper. But a greasy, cheesy box is not recyclable. You want recyclables to be clean that's why we even ask for them to rinse and I brought a couple of other of my favorite things that tend to stump people and in this bag the plastic bag which you're not supposed to recycle is my non recyclables and in my canvas bag and I have this from your booth at the carnival yes I carry it in case anybody else an excellent form that you can find on the borough website um, under the environmental commission things 
So I have, these are my recyclable things, and these are my not recyclables. Now, the two really confusing things I'm going to bring out first. All right. Now, we all know that this is the not recyclable one because it's in my plastic bag. But it has a number one on the bottom, and this has a number one in the bottom. So why can't we recycle it? Because they're actually, they're slightly different. They melt at different temperatures. These are hard to sort. And so re um, recycling, handling facilities, they don't want these. Okay? So how these, do people know? Because what I tell people, so if it has a screw-on cap, recycle it. If it does not have this cap, don't recycle it. Throw it in your garbage. Aren't we supposed to take the caps off the bottle? No. Yes. Okay. So that's, thank ah. you for bringing that up. Exactly. This cap does not belong here. It goes in the garbage. No caps of any kind. Why? Um, and I wrote down a name. Yeah, this is called Thoroform plastic, and these are rigid plastics, and that's the difference. So this is garbage. And also, this time of year, we're all doing our plantings. This is not recyclable. Um, this one has a number five on the bottom. The only number fives recyclable are our dairy containers. Now these are both fives. Not recyclable, recyclable. But think dairy. There you can sour cream, cottage cheese. Number that has five. a lid. No the lid. The lid, lid I already threw out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the lid is garbage. So recyclable, not recyclable. And even if it's a number one, I've seen number ones, I've seen number sixes, not recyclable. It has to have, what did I say? A screw on cap or be a dairy container. And that is my recycling lesson wow. for tonight. Beautiful. Thank Are you, you going to come you. every week and show <laughs> people the things that are So you are, now what about all the bottles that keep the caps on? What happens to that? Uh, recycle geez, with the it's a good on. question what they do. I mean, it makes our product a lower quality. So it's best to take the caps off. It makes it a lot easier for the handling facilities. I think I've he also heard another reason about the caps as the bottles go through the machinery, the caps could fly off, hit somebody in the eye, wow. and so they become a danger to the workers. There. Now when we had the recycling with the paper and the plastic and the metal and the glass, you were not allowed to have shredded paper. Right. But with paper recycling separate, you can have shredded paper. You can, and we just ask that, you know, put it in a paper bag before you put it out the curb, because right. you don't want the shreddings to go down the street in the wind. Right. Um, but yes, you can put your shredded paper in now, which is a nice convenience. I look forward to your next lesson. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> that was very good. Um, and now can I step one more time? Uh, sure, and but I learned something tonight about the caps. What's the update on the Sandy Beach property? Is there any any new news? It's in, uh, no, it's with our, it's in the hands of our attorney. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Michael Kozak, 24 Cayuga, Oakland, New Jersey, here as Vice Chair of uh, Public Events and the Carnival. Just want to thank everybody who was involved, um, from uh, all the volunteers that were on the public events and the volunteers and all of the organizations um, putting in the time and appears to have been a nice event. I have heard, not only was this a great carnival, they love the fireworks, but the organization with the cars, people were raving about the access in and out of the carnival, they, they were very appreciative. Yes, and of course, Chopper's here as the chair of public events. Chopper. Not to miss out on introducing him, but it's all right. No, it seemed to, you know, we're getting each year, we can tweak it a little bit, and we have a short list of things that came up in our meeting and feedback from, uh, from people of what to do. And um, basically, that's it. It's become a cookie cutter thing. and. You know, is it work? Yeah, it's work, but it, as long as you keep getting the organizational side set up, you know, you go through it and Monday, Tuesday set up, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, hopefully you have good rain, uh, good weather and then you go from there. So for the most part, it, you know, the vendor's very happy with us. We're one of the mo easiest groups to work with. Um, we did about $107,000 in ticket sales. Um, that's about $800 less than two years ago. So we're just shy of our record. Um, being over 100,000 puts us in a good position with the ride vendor. We happen to have one of the most sought after weekends of the year because it falls just 
as school is closing and before graduation parties and vacation starts. Some people would say it's the worst weekend of the year because there's you know certain things going on in their lives, but quite frankly, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, there are other towns and places and organizations that would like to have our weekend, and we just happened to get lucky four years ago with a um, with a church out in Long Island that couldn't get their property anymore, and I heard through the grapevines made a call, and we got this basically number one vendor. So. Thank you. Was any other feedback? It was great, or? and I know you all worked very much. So thank you. Let, yeah. Mayor, if I, uh, yeah. let me just say thank you. Mike, Mike is very uh, modest by saying it's cookie cutter. Um, the work that goes into the carnival is um, a lot of work, and Mike does a lot of it. He's um, everybody ra rallies behind Mike when it comes to the carnival, and um, uh, it's it's just amazing. The the you you can't imagine the. The, the time that he puts in and um, uh, really thank you for for everything and um, the carnival is as good as it is because because of you and and thank you. And, and your work and yeah and it, we have eight and just interject there's like nine fabulous people on public events I mean we have to fill whatever 180 hours in the ticket booth Mike name them I was there <laughs> <laughs> and they were uh, yeah I mean Diane and uh, Jerry Jerry, I don't name. Don't miss anybody. Maine. Don't miss I mean, anybody. No, no, just sitting there Brian every day. This yeah. Year. Brian, Brian uh, yeah. Tully came in, came Pat through. Pat was there. Pat. Uh, Bob was there. Bob was there. Um, who else? Our Chopper, secretary. Chopper was there. Oh, um, Stacy. 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 Yeah, don't forget Stacy. With, with you know, oh, triplets <laughs> and, uh, and other. But, and it was so great because people would just watch when the crowd died down. They would go home and do their thing and everybody got a day with their family and it's that, that kind of thing that makes it easier because I stress over, you know, are we going to keep the line short? Can we keep people moving along? We did the informational sheet again where we talked about what ride heights there were on the back side. We did the menu, talked about what was being offered in the booths. Um, you know, you wish you always had more time to do more, but for the most part, Chopper got out there with a couple of people and got all those signs out and we did remove them on Saturday night, all the ones we remember we put out. Uh, Saturday night. The ones that no one saw that are against the town rules. We never saw them. We never saw them. It is a cooperative thing. Even I mean, these two gentlemen bear the brunt of the stress the night before and even the week uh, uh, leading up to it. Yeah, there, there's a lot of, <laughs> believe it or not, there's a lot of stress for, 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 for them especially. Uh, you know, we have a list, check-off list that's, you know, two pages that they go through to make sure everything is done ahead of time. Their devotion to our community is, is uh, outstanding. They really do a great job. You did a great job. Thanks. Thank and Mike you. keeps it very well organized. <clears throat> yeah. and, and what do you think about having the fireworks on Friday night? Great question. Before we say, what did you think? I think no, it was I'm seamless. asking you. Yeah, I think what it was did? seamless. I think, I think it worked well. Uh, I, I've been in the last spot for crowd control for the last, same spot for crowd control for the last six or so years and it was just as crowded that night that Friday night as it was uh, years past they were actually more well behaved this year which was good um, I, I, I think it was a great thing to do some organizations were sold out Michael, what did it do to the uh, Saturday night? It's Saturday night crowd. So, so we did forty-five thousand on Friday night, and we did thirty thousand on Saturday oh, night, wow. which basically flipped from uh, two years ago when we had fireworks. <coughs> okay, no. it was flipped the other way. Yeah, and um, we had ample parking. Um, uh, Captain <coughs> Sanzari and I drove around. Uh, at, at showtime at nine o'clock um, to see what parking situations were, um, look at the road blockage, brainstormed ideas for next year, which he's already confirmed in writing that they're going to look at alternatives that came up that him and I brainstormed and and is very positive. What a what a, a relief dealing with the police this year it really and, was. And an, the fireworks were nine forty-five. That was kind of late. Well, well, so so we moved it, it up, later. right? Well, so what happens is yeah. is that when we have it at nine, people see the fireworks and they leave. And well, there's two situations: the parking lot massively cleared out this year, just before fireworks started. There were a lot of people with younger kids this year. Once, yes, and in fact, we counted 75 to 100 spots that were open before the first wow. bang went. And then the captain called me, or we had a conversation about the bus being stopped to come down. 
And he said, man, you should see the exodus that's going on right now wow. in the parking lot. He was standing there. He says, you know, it seems like people are leaving for the fireworks rather than coming for the fireworks. Okay. But bottom line is we used to do 9 o'clock, and then the vendors would lose all the customers. If they were online, everybody would go to sit down, and then they lost that customer. We moved it to 9.30, 9.45. The ride vendor said out in Long Island they don't start till 10 o'clock. Oh, really? Because of that same situation. That yeah, it's it stops. A, it's a, it's a, the end is here. It's getting close, yeah, right? right? We're the only town that any carnival has ever said that stops the rides from going on. Um, and there's pluses and minuses in doing that. Um, but moving it to 10 o'clock is something that we're considering um, because it would just bring the end later than sooner, you know, as far as right. what goes on there. Well, I got to tell you something. The fireworks display started off slow. It was the best finale I've seen in years. Mm -hmm. yeah, they it was a great finale. finale. Right. So if you remember last year, we, a lot, we didn't have fireworks. We did not reschedule it. Um, our $11,000 contract, we owed half of that to them. I negotiated and was able to take that 5,000 and apply 3,000 towards this year. So we went from 11 to 14, and they waived the other 2,000 oh. that we owed. With nothing to worry about that we had to sign up next year for the same $14,000 package. Um, we did owe 900 and some odd dollars for transportation back and forth when they couldn't shoot them off uh, last year. So we netted some difference, uh, but the general feeling was, was that at our meeting was that People felt that they were worth it, that it was a good show, and in order to fund it, we're looking at sponsorships and things of that nature to maintain the 14. Nothing's been decided to maintain it. It's just that that's the goal we would like to do. So to looking at it from a financial standpoint, um, you know, 107,000, we get 35% of that uh, towards us, or they take 65, and what's ever left in the end is ours, right, which yeah, is 35. Right. Our drawers are plus minus, a very small amount. Um, we have all of our expenses, fireworks, the tents, the Taj Mahal porta potties. Um, Excellent. Right. And people, we debated that and we're going to keep it because people have not gotten to know it and they stay longer and they don't worry about going home to go to the bathroom. Okay. Granite, granite countertops. I mean, who yeah. would <laughs> <laughs> just can't get that FM reception. Yeah. yeah. So in the end, we netted about $9,000 and there's discussions of all this work for 9,000 and um, I think that that funds all of our stuff during the year and we're all volunteers so we're not looking to make a killing but on the other hand if we can find money to get sponsorships and maybe do some kind of concert with some name you know down the road that's some of the discussions that are going on in the meeting. We so may have, you may have only made 9,000 on the carnival but all the civic organizations mm -hmm. if you tallied all that that they made I'm sure it's triple, maybe quadruple the amount of triple yeah. the money you're, yeah. you're talking about. That's no, and they and they do appreciate it. And the two hundred dollars a tent that it costs us, we fund that. That's another. The seating area is another. You know, twenty by sixty. That costs us whatever fifty five, six hundred fifty five hundred dollars, six thousand dollars. So when you start to say minus 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 off of whatever thirty five thousand um, dollars, but it's an event. It's a beautiful yeah, event. It is. Um, promotions in Ringwood and the. Western part of um, a Western bus is something we'd like to do more of to try to get those towns to come in um, to participate and we're looking at some options of promoting it at certain vendors that are there and things of that nature. Mm. So, but for right now we're kind of happy where we're at. The parking lot is overfilled on Fridays. We're going to go to a double shuttle bus on Fridays and eliminate Saturday's uh, shuttle bus because there was ample parking in the municipal lot. Half of Valley was empty Saturday night doing $30,000. We still had ample space. So, very good. Thank you. Some of the improvements, very quickly, we intend to do is give each vendor a uh, reserved parking spot so that on a Saturday night or a Friday night when they get overwhelmed, that someone has access. We're going to work with the police on that to give them a special pass. Because, like, you have pizza coming in for somebody. And one of the booths had pizza. Yeah, and then, like, if someone runs out of hot dogs or something like that, they can schlep <laughs> up and down. <laughs> And also that everyone that's a vendor there, a nonprofit, has to maintain their tent for the port nights for the that full are given. the time, even Not if they sell out, is that what you're saying? Yes. But you were saying about parking, that's one of Mike's strengths, and it's still not to where he's happy. This guy worries like you wouldn't believe. 
Well, the more you have for people, they want to come back. They found right. it easy so, to go there. They're going to remember. Okay. Sure. How many strollers were rolling out at five o'clock out of our parking lot right? into our into our event was awesome this year. I mean, and then they're going to stay. They're going to do their things, and then they're tired after two hours, three hours. They go home. The next set of people keep rolling in. You know, I, I, I've done over 300 trade shows in my career, so I'm whether I participated or actually organized them. So I have that tendency to, to, to not stress over some of these things. It's just, it's cookie cutter. This is He's what stressed. you do when you go from there. Stress. You know, well, I, I thank definitely you. stress. But <laughs> he gets in that ticket booth, it's all stress. But it's <laughs> and thank the next guys. event is. I don't know because I don't do them. What is it now? Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> oh, it's Halloween already? Halloween. No. And then uh, we'll the go relax this summer. Oh, the holiday then, party. After the holiday that party. Yeah. So, hey, Mike. Just so you know, I checked with two constituents, my two daughters, and I got two thumbs up, and they loved it. Yeah. <laughs> great and job. We've been yeah. blessed with a great uh, ride provider. You know, and the way he lays that thing out. Public. Yeah. Really well. If you got comments, you can go to uh, the website, to um, the town website, and the public events. Um, you know, email, send anything along. You know, anything good or bad, we just gather it up and then tweak whatever we need to tweak. That's important. Yep. To your opinion. Our Thank goal you. is just to make it better every year mm -hmm. on all Thank the events that we're Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else? A motion to close? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> um, Minutes, June 9th, 2018, it's a special meeting. Your motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamal. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Jim Bellis. Yes. Councilman Chalamini. Yes. There's also a special executive session of, of June 9th, and if you have any comments, it'll be done during that. Is there any comments? Roll call. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Oh, we didn't do the motion? Second. Oh. We did now. Now we did. Okay. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Cologne. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pudatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. <coughs> Minutes of the regular meeting of June 13th. So <coughs> Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamal. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pudatelli. Yes. Councilman Talamini. Yes. Council yes. Special meeting, it's an executive, well, it wasn't a special meeting, it was an executive session of June 13th. If there's any discussion, it'll be held during an executive session. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Then roll call. Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamal. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Chalamet. Yes. We have two appointments. I'll get to Station Park. I didn't forget you. <laughs> um, for the Oakland Green Team, Callie O'Neill, she's a sophomore at Indian Hills High School, which is great to see that young people want to get involved. Um, is that mine? Yep. That's my uh, appointment? Your appointment. I appoint <coughs> Callie O'Neill. Please go to Borough Hall, see Lisa, and sign um, to seal. Callie uh, came to our um, meeting, Environmental Commission meeting, uh, last, last month, not recently, the month before. And she was the young lady who I could not remember her last name that gave a presentation on sustainability. She did a tremendous project up at the high school, uh, and we can see her extreme value to our uh, community. Yes, she Thank lives you, in Oakland. Yes. Callie is a sophomore <clears throat> in Indian Hills High School. Now she wrote she's a sophomore in June 12th, so I bet she's going to be a junior. Absolutely. <laughs> mm. Now, we have someone who wants to come on to the Oakland Library. However, before I can appoint you, which I was going to do, unfortunately, the member of the Oakland um, library, Public Library Board did not resign yet. It was only told to me that she's resigning, but an official resignation has not been submitted. So I have to hold off appointing you, Marilyn. So um, Ronnie Levine, who's the one who contacted me, Ronnie, please make sure that whoever the member is that's resigning Contact Lisa and please, she must submit a written letter of resignation so that I can next next council meeting appoint a member to the library board. And one more thing, if, um, well, public service has um, has asked to extend work hours for the gas monetization. Program. Is that the 202 work they're talking yes, about? Yes, yes, it is. 
So, um, is there any discussion on that? Yes. Go ahead. Um, we've had many requests for uh, work on Saturday, and I believe we have, in 100% of the cases, said that we didn't want them to start before 9 o'clock. That's correct, 9 to 5. Yeah, they, yeah, they want to start at 7 a.m., which, I mean, I, I know it makes the work go faster, and believe me, I, li I live on Rimpal Valley Road, I want it to go fast. But, uh, you know, this is the one day that, that, that people get to sleep in a little bit. And uh, let me tell you, my house was shaking this morning uh, when they started. It was after 9 o'clock, but... You already um, felt it. Pardon? Yeah, I really felt it. I mean, because they, there's the steamroller, whatever you call it, rolls over that patch and vibrates. And Vibratory roller. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 um, I would like to see it be 9 to 5 on Saturday. I don't mind 7 to 5 during the week, but I would request, I suggest 9 to 5 on Saturday. I agree with that for consistency. Anybody else have can a I, comment? Can I just ask a question? Because it is such a uh, thoroughfare in town, is there any a possibility we can ask public service to go from 9 to 7 so they can get the extra two hours in? Richard, I, you're the contact? Well, John's actually been in contact with PC and G on this rather extensively, so I don't know if that's something that uh, you know they would entertain, just basically shifting it two hours. So, I mean, we could uh, ride it to be 7 p.m. and it'll be at their option uh, if they want to take that time. Well, anybody I have typically any? Typically, don't see them working that late on Saturday, but give them the option. The only other question I have, Mayor, is if they if we did let them start two hours earlier, did they tell us how long? They thought that might shorten the project in duration of days? I can't believe that they would shorten No, I think that they're looking to do this to just ensure that they get it done before Labor Day. Oh, that, that's, that's correct. Okay. I, could, I could vouch for that. Do so, you want to talk I, to them? Then no. I, I think we should, we should give them as much of an opportunity as possible without inconveniencing uh, the public so that uh, we could get the work done before Labor Day. Because after Labor Day, as everybody knows, the traffic goes up and things become more difficult. Does I anybody mean, have a problem if they continue until 7 p.m.? I don't. No, I do not. I think it's a good idea. All right, so can you talk to them and tell them they have the extra two hours, but it's at the back end, not on Right, not, 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 not 7 a.m., 9 a.m. on Saturday. All right. Now, before we get into um, Station Park, um, it was, it wasn't a few weeks ago, it was more than a few weeks ago, I was approached by some residents about, I guess it was, it must have been a few months ago, because it was shortly after the holidays, about having a, an, an Oakland Holiday Lights Committee. And two of the people um, said they would chair this committee, and I said, well, that's very nice, but you would have to find people who, residents, who want to be on this Oakland Holiday Lights Committee. It would not be at any expense, correct? Not at any expense to the borough. Correct. And it's to brighten up the town during the holiday season. So I have an ad hoc committee that I'm going to um, appoint. You're smiling. You're smiling. Who are you looking at? Brian, <laughs> oh. <laughs> as he's looking at his phone, Oprah. I'm looking at my phone. Okay. So um, as an ad hoc committee, I'm going to um, have a, we're going to try it for one year, see how it works. Uh, it'll be for this year, for the holiday season. It's an Oakland Holiday Lights Committee. I have two members, who, two residents who would like to co-chair. That's Michael Rose and Chopper Thomas Russo. Mm. And they gave me some names who all of these people will have to come to Borough Hall, mm -hmm. fill out a of citizen, including you and Mike fill out a citizen leadership form and go over to Lisa with it. So the following people would love to be on this committee. And I'm appointing to this ad hoc committee and just keep us up to date on what's happening. So Michael Rose and Chopper Russo will be the co-chairs of the Oakland Holiday Lights Committee. And it will, the additional members will be Anne Marie Nusifora, Michelle Rosamond, Dorothy Casamano, Tracy Kluke, mm -hmm. Angela Yesis, and Nisha Patel. So please, all of you who volunteered, thank you. Thank you for working with Mike and Chopper, because he has nothing else to do, but he loves doing these other activities. Please go to Borough Hall, submit a, um, a citizen leadership form, 
and see Lisa at Borough Hall, and I will give you these names. And Chopper and Mike, thank you for taking this on. And you, you need a vote on the PSU and the Okay. The on the 7 p.m.? Yes. But yeah. thank you, Mike, and uh, Mike, who's watching, and Chopper, for taking on this activity, a new event in town, and it's to make the holiday brighter. So it's going to be very exciting. You'll be reading about it and hearing about it. Okay. Go. I wanted to do it before Chopper left. But at this time, I, I would like a motion uh, in order to um, extend, extend the hours for our PSC and G to work um, on the gas system modernization, modernization program. Instead of uh, 7 to 5, it will be 9 to 7. On Saturday. On, on Saturday. Saturday, yes. On so Saturday. moved. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Passed. Okay, we have a presentation, Station Park. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kevin Heffernan, and it's my honor to be the chair of the Station Park Committee. It's also my privilege to present the work of an incredible assembly of highly talented and dedicated men and women to make this report possible. My purpose here tonight is to provide the mayor and council and all of Oakland with the report of Station Park Ad Hoc Committee and its success. Initially, these moments were dedicated to providing a report, but now it's beyond that. It's time for a celebration and thanks for initiating the funding for the Station Park process. This report proves that a dedicated team of successful and accomplished individuals can and will make a difference for creating a better Oakland. It's an awesome team. It's an honor to work with them. For the last six months, they have labored. <coughs> they have labored to make Station Park a reality. Indeed, even the new design for Station Park has been accomplished. Now, the funding process has begun. We're on our way. The next step is the collective will and determination to make it happen in the very near future. And by doing so, begin the revitalization of our downtown. The people of Oakland deserve Station Park. Our merchants need Station Park and want it. And the future of Oakland as a, as a vibrant community demands it. Let's take a look at the report. My purpose here, as I mentioned, is to share the mayor and council the vision of Station Park and share the recommendations generated. This is what we see when we come into Oakland. We see it every day. And I'll submit to this group, nobody likes it. But we, we ignore it. We see it too often. We've accepted that as our gateway. That's very unfortunate. We can do better. When we started the process, with, <clears throat> we took a look at the tax map of the area. The idea was simply to determine who owns what in that space. Indeed, we found a triangle of spaces owned by Oakland. That rectangle you see is, in fact, the original station park, uh, railroad station property, and the borough of Oakland owns the left side of the Enterprise Building. This, in a way, became our palette, where the artists of the team can actually take a brush and make something beautiful out of that. Excuse me, before you go on, I'm sorry. If you go back, the, the corner piece of property on Yapo says it's barrel owned? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, he's just using the check to show you the, what the check means. The check equals Oakland owned that's property. It's just that's a point of key. reference. Oh, okay. We it's don't just own a that point of reference. No, that's Krauser. Not the corner of No, I'm not being in here with two separate Krausers. We don't own Krausers. Oakland does not own Krausers. No, we do not own Krausers. We do not give Mr. Nailing something. They're just trying to show the symbol of it, Pat. Okay, thank the you. check mark means is equal to Oakland owned property. Thank you. Continue? Yes, thank okay. you. When we took the palette and started to paint, we had a lot of questions. There were, there were many, many items to discuss in this station park project. And we grabbed those issues and we dissected those issues and we fought about those issues. And we came to the consensus that there are no development impediments for Oakland, for station park. None. 
Tom Connolly was invited to one of our earlier meetings, and he came prepared to discuss the easement. And indeed, as the flagpole right now is within the easement of, of the county road. That's not an issue. Flagpole will be moved with mm -hmm. Station Park. Bottom line, there are no impediments in Station Park. It's clear sailing all the way through. Now, when we took a look at the design, and I hasten to add, this design, I thank Ed Clark and Peter Keycott, worked very, very hard to develop the concept of Station Park, but more importantly, the concept beyond Station Park. You'll see the area in red here is Station Park. The area is in front of Station Park, the area across from Station Park, is even down here. Okay. Oh, yeah, if you can't, oh, the mic. I'm you have sorry. To be close to the. Uh, I have to be close to the mic. It's up there. You need a pointer. It's, it's on the. I don't have a pointer. <laughs> Anybody have a pointer? Yeah. Borrow that finger. <laughs> the areas in red represent the areas of focus of the committee, and it encompasses Station Park. Yes, but also goes beyond Station Park. Because why Station Park by itself, as beautiful as it is. It's kind of an oasis in a bad desert. And so the thought was, we must go beyond Station Park to improve the entire gateway coming north and most importantly coming south on Rampa Belly Road. One of our first considerations was the environmental factors. We turned to the 2006 master plan. We found that it's already been assessed in very thoroughly. And there were no environmental considerations for the development of Station Park. Another item checked off, clear sailing ahead. I see a strange look on Nancy's face. <laughs> but we, we went further. The Environmental Committee endorses Station Park as is currently. Yes. Is that as correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, continue. <laughs> Thank you. The Environmental Committee endorses Station Park, as is currently constructed, but we went beyond, thanks to Nancy. So we're going to use structural soil for all tree development. It's a very important and very technical t process I am not able to really describe, Nancy can, or Ed can. Plenty of northern red oak trees, the state tree of New Jersey, and Oakland, our heritage. And finally, the whole area is designed to absorb water, unlike Bush Plaza now, which is all McKenna. The enhancements that we have proposed are Station Park design layout, the streetscape, streetscape enhancements immediately surrounding the park along Rampa Valley Road, coupled with themed design elements of trees, pavers, walkways, etc. I present to you Station Park. This is a new design. Now, I'll try, I'll walk you through the design. In the center, there is the clock, a four-sided clock that recalls ancient Oakland's historical past. Behind the clock, the rect rectangle, is the exact footprint of the original railroad station, tragically destroyed in 1958. It will have <clears throat> the, the flesh-colored colored areas, or walkways. You will also see, in the upper right, the new flagpole with a paper walkway around it. The large circles are trees, the small circles are bushes and grass. The area that's toned green in the center is grass. The flagpole will contain a replica of the original Indian sign that hangs proudly in the, in the chambers today. And it also will provide five parking spaces, increase of two or three over what's currently there. <coughs> as a practical matter, in addition to, one of them will be for handicapped. Where's the parking? The cars. Oh, well, well, to the I'll lower left oh, corner right. is oh, the right. Enterprise Building. Got it. And hopefully one of them will be an electric charging station. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be difficult for the police to stay there, yeah. as they currently do. Excuse me, Kevin, weren't, were, didn't we discuss some of this parking area to be um, um, Bit of Miss McAdam, something that can absorb water also? I think it was pavers that, yes. 
Thank you for bringing that up. I think there were pavers used. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Porous paver. Porous pavers. That will absorb water. Again, there'll be zero runoff from the park and zero pollutants going into our ecosystem. Some of the key elements of the park. Of course, the core center piece of the park will be a four-sided clock. These are prototypical. These are not the final design elements. You'll see themed benches. The entire theme of the park will be late 19th century. Oh. They're again reflecting Oakland's heritage. <coughs> You'll see period lamps and period fence. Right now, Bush Plaza does not have a, oops, does not have a fence to protect people from the railroad. We will put one in. The flagpole, the new flagpole, complete with the Oakland sign and a plaque in front of the area that is the, the old footprint of the station. We'll also have flowering trees, walkways, small planted shrubs. In terms of traffic flow, the police department has approved the traffic flow. Traffic will flow into the park only from the southbound lane of Ramapo Valley Road. Leaving, it will circle the building, the Enterprise building, go around, exit through the borough parking lot, and go right or left from that exit. This has been submitted to the police department and they have approved it. <coughs> and it's safer than what is today because today you can access the flagpole area <coughs> north or south. That will change. Also, Station Park will have a walkway going all the way in front of it, which currently it does not have. So we've improved the safety of that area as well as the environment of the area. So the exit will be by the Remax building? Yes. I got it. Okay. Okay. Now, the design elements. Again, we referred back to the 2006 downtown master plan. And it was very helpful, very telling. The master plan then, 12 years ago, provided for thematic design reflecting the borough character. That's what this is all about. And it goes on as I've underlined in red. Again, here's Station Park from an aerial perspective. You can see some, some of the planning that goes in, not just Station Park, but in front of it and the side of it and up the road from it. You'll see on the upper right hand side, upper right hand corner, flesh colored area. That's the exit from exit 58 from 287. You'll see the down the lower left hand corner. You'll see Targoon Street. Again, paper crossways, paper corners. Closing in on it, to give you an idea. Oops, microphone. Going down Targoon Street, very importantly. Again, Targoon Street, that intersection with the dressing with trees and the uh, crosswalks, okay, elevating the entire area and both sides of the street. Kevin, just yes. a question. The, the paver crosswalks and sidewalks, will they withstand the salt that we put down in this town? Okay. Head? The granite headers and the, the paver crosswalks typically be concrete, um, considering clay as well. That's the, that's, that's the current concept. Other ideas are uh, just striving. We're looking at clay pavers. Okay. All the pattern concrete. I think the answer is yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Going down around the Valley Road, we went to Rotary Park. One of our original concepts was to, to have a new public signage area. Okay. Currently, we have those stickies from 1958 or something. And <laughs> I think that was bad technology then. Okay. But moving down Rampa Valley Road, in Rotary Park, we have a new electronic sign controlled you know, from the area of Borough Hall by a computer. I mean, it is high tech, but it'll also be designed in a very right. classic fashion. We've talked about that. Yes. Okay. So, what we have, and even around Rotary Park, is going to be improved. Again, the access, the pavers crossing back and forth. It'll be a beautiful sight. Rotary Park is the park exiting the uh, middle school. Yes, sir. 
That's what we do. Going up round for Valley Road. This is exit 58, also 287. We plan to have a welcome to Oakland sign. A beautiful sign surrounded by beautiful shrubbery. Okay, with again pavers going across the street and pavers on the other side of the street. I mean, it is again gateway. This is a very interesting slide. This is the Seals Shopping Center. Right. The original thought we had was we're open to acquire a foot or two of the spacing for that ugly, god awful fence. That metal, the yeah. metal rail again. Guardrail. That's, that's guardrail that is bent, rusted, so on and so forth. Uh, I approached Ed Baker, who owns a shopping center. Very interesting guy, lives in the Hohokus. He came to Oakland, we had an hour and a half breakfast. And he was incredibly excited about the plan. And when I approached the topic of Oakland buying, leasing forever, whatever that piece of real estate, he couldn't do it as a businessman. His rationale as a businessman, myself, I understand. He said, someday I may want to redevelop the property. I may want to put in an entrance onto Randall Valley Road okay. or an exit. And Over there? If Oakland owns it, I can't do it. Now, the probability of all of that, I can't speak to. But by him selling the property, that one or two foot strip, he would lower the value of his own property. So what he did say though, he says, you do Station Park, I will do that. Do what? The entire design. Yeah. Design calls for the, the fencing along Grandpa Valley Road. It calls for three, four, excuse me, areas that are currently no parking areas within the parking lot. They are yellow lined areas. Mm -hmm. We wanted to develop some trees, some masonry around them, and beautify the whole thing. He will do that if we do Station Park. Wow. Wow. The cost of doing that is about $30,000. Really? Yeah. <coughs> On the last set of numbers we have. Kevin, I don't see any, uh, we have any parking to the buildings now that would be eliminated? Um, so I'm not sure I understand your question. We have head in parking going into the deli, the bakery. The no, 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 it's just not represented. Oh, it's just not represented. Right. I thought it was Sorry. No, no, not at all. <clears throat> okay. okay. And, and Ed was at the, uh, see, the, the town hall meeting last night. We discussed it further. Okay. He's really excited. Good and guy. he's going to spend the money, his own money? Yeah, his own money. And when he first came to Oakland, I met him uh, maybe a month, month and a half ago. He seldom gets up this way, he told me. Since he came here, he can't believe how vibrant the community is. The shopping, the people, the traffic, everything. He was very surprised and very impressed. The total cost, as you've seen, well, this, this chart's about a month old. It's about $863,000. This is not an exact dollar number. This is really, and if I'm wrong, order of magnitude. A million dollars. Roughly. That's probably the better, better number to work with. I mean, we don't know we're still working on the final line-by-line -line cost. Summarize. The initial findings confirm no impediments. Revised park and landscape, the plans are developed and being fine-tuned as we speak. Park plans are environmentally sound and supportive with our best objectives. Traffic flow is approved by the police department. Costs and budgets are established. The grant process is initiated. Beautiful. Next steps. Quick question, Kevin, I'm sorry. Yes. So with the grant process, there'll be no, no borough money. That's my understanding. <coughs> and fundraising, you're gonna do fundraising? This there will be some, but this project is not a volunteer project. I mean, it, it's not like Great Oak Park, which is a fabulous facility, involves a lot of people. This will be probably done by contractors. Soup so, to nuts. So what do you, well, wait till you finish. The fundraising things we're thinking about are buy a bench, buy a light pole, buy the plaque, sponsor cutting the lawns. Uh, things of that nature. 
No taxpayer dollars. Excuse me? No taxpayer That's the no bottom taxpayer. line, no yeah. taxpayer no, dollars. No taxpayer yeah. dollars whatsoever. Huh. That's the, the dream, yeah. How can you say no to that? I agree with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think the people of Oakland agree with you. Now, so, so everything here is very well thought out, thanks to Peter and Ed, and thanks to the incredible team. And, and I think we're at the point now of moving on it. The second aspect is to provide a letter to Mr. Kuntz, or a proclamation, whatever the appropriate documentation is, to of the official support that will be attached to the grant application. Is there a deadline? Uh, I believe it's August 27th. So Councilman Levy? I believe it's that, top, that was the top grant that we, were, that we had to uh, approve at the last meeting. Yeah. August 27th. Yeah. So we'll, we'll need a letter or a proclamation, probably a proclamation saying, great idea, we need it desperately, long overdue, whatever the right word so is. So we should do it sooner than later? Yes. Because yes. it's mm -hmm. the summer. Absolutely. So is there some wording that we need to put in? Excuse me? Is there certain wording that's necessary to put in? I'm not aware of specific wording. I mean, I can write we'll it if to you want. Councilman but, but I think yeah. Councilman Levy can... I'll write something else. Okay. Now, again, Station Park. This is the beginning of the renaissance of downtown Oakland, which has been abandoned since the 1960s. Now, In conclusion, this body and the people of Oakland have now witnessed the dedication and work of the committee. <clears throat> and they have witnessed the support of their elected officials. At the last meeting, this body began the funding process to make Station Park a reality. That's fantastic news. And all of Oakland thanks you. All of Oakland. Even now, as we're going forward with Station Park, there's another aspect that needs to be positive. The development of Station Park will mark the renaissance of civic pride, abandoned by generations of neglect, as, which has cost significantly every homeowner, dearly as measured in significantly lower values than our neighbors. The difference is staggering, particularly when none of our neighbors offer either the quality or quantity of services and capabilities of Oakland. For example, the median price of a house in Wyckoff is $293,000 more than that in Oakland. Oakland's measure is $448,000. Ramsey's $105,000. Franklin Lakes is $535,000. <coughs> Some might say, well, there are bigger houses in those towns. That's fair. But it certainly doesn't tell a story. You look at average price per square foot, the great leveler of a house, the median house, in these towns I just mentioned. And the differences are still staggering. Average price per square foot. So the size of the house doesn't really count in that calculation. Station Park will begin to create a value-based high tide that will raise all ships, specifically the value of every home in Oakland. Oakland will no longer suffer under the power of poor first impressions. Our gateway will be changed and welcoming. And finally, and I add parenthetically, and separately from Station Park, that the planning of our downtown rehabilitation ought not wait until sewers are completed in two or three years. Planning, visualization, retailer buy-in, and source funding <coughs> should be started now, with the implementation beginning the day the sewers trenches are filled. In fact, enhancing the facades of our retail buildings can be accomplished prior to sewers with trees, walkways, pavers, light posts added the day the sewers are completed. I thank you. <coughs> and thank you again for your time, your attentiveness, and the opportunity to serve a better open. And thank you again for initiating the funding process with Station Park. Thank you for all your thank work. You. Thank you to the whole committee. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Beautiful for your the committee. presentation. And who we'll put together <coughs> the PowerPoint? I did. Very nice. Thank you. Pat, Pat did. Do you have a question? <laughs> all right, we have someone who would like to ask a question about this. 
Oh, thank you. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> you have a question about Station Park? Yes. Yes. Uh, ben Cassio, 45 Lakeshore. Um, as you know, I've been in town now for over 40 years and been involved with a lot of the uh, traffic situation. I just had two concerns that I just want to bring to uh, your attention and consideration for reconsideration. Uh, first of all, left turn out of either the park or by the Remax, I would counsel against that totally. Right turns only, just like you have opposite on Yapo. You can only make a right turn up to 7 o'clock, of course. So that's the first thing I would, I would say. If people want to go north, they could go around the block, just like everybody else does now. Uh, the other concern I have is more personal, that if you put a fence along the park, it's going to negatively impact my Toys for Tots train. Oh, we'll so come up with a plan. Maybe you could put a gate in gate, it yeah, so go. they could load the Absolutely. train off of that. Okay. This is for the Marines. Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you, but I think it's wonderful. I really applaud your... Uh, thank you very much, sir. It's the whole Can committee. I to do for Toys for Tots. Fully Thank you. And B. Does there a And And B. Yes. What? I'm saying Ed and Pete because they're a lot of credit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. You Fantastic didn't get the right names job. of everybody. You, do it you didn't get the names of everybody on the committee. You're, you're right. <laughs> they don't want to know? <laughs> <laughs> it's called team. It's the team. It's the station park team. There's no I in the word team. That's right. That's very good. I have a question or comment. You certainly could ask focus that way because that's the <laughs> right so the question would be okay so if you're only going to make right hand turns coming south south right if I'm coming north and I want to get to the park how would I get there good question not sure there's I have an answer for it this time I right. don't so so the challenge is that that spot is really really congested already I mean I think the concept is awesome and I knew this was going on but I never really looked at it the concern I have is the same thing we have at fireworks night is when we start to block roads off and make people go one way, they have to come back. So if they're going and over three or four or five years realize that they can't make a left turn, whether they're from town or not from town, or think about the people trying to go to Enterprise or any other business that's there. We have to be either adding more signs to say make a left here earlier by no, so are you saying no, just forget no about fence, this project? No offense, Chopper. Are you saying forget about the project? No, I'm not saying You're that. saying to... Oh, I just think these are things plan. we just need to think about. Absolutely. Right? So if you're, gonna, if you're gonna have to say no left turn there, which is another sign that we're gonna add to the already congested amount of signs, 2025, mm -hmm. that are between Oak Street and Yapo. If you try to read them all, I bet you don't even realize they're there. Okay? No, you're right. Um, if I may. Know, yes. I think I can address part of your... The button. <laughs> if I may address part of your concern. So one of the things that, that, that's, that's out there right now is on our master plan over on West Oakland where the exit for or the entrance into 287 is, that traffic light where the retention pond is. Mm -hmm. So part of the master plan allows for that intersection to become a four-way intersection. Um, so if you were going from Skyline Drive into town, you'd get to the 287. You can either make a left and get on 287 or go straight up to Walgreens you will be able to make a right turn there. And actually the road that um, Chopper, your building is, I can never remember. It's, it's uh, We're on Rampo Valley Road, but no, you're no, to Terry Hewn? Yeah. Where Oakland Drugs is? Right, so so Terry Hewn and, and, the, road, and the, road, the road that M&T Bank is on, these are roads that actually go back a little farther than, than, than they do right now. And there is a design to put a road from that 287 intersection running behind everything. Right. So that will become a very good alternate feed into that area and also as a bypass um, you know, for some of that traffic congestion. Matter of fact, I think uh, we're gonna be sitting down with the DOT and the uh, county in July with traffic engineers to start discussing that very thing. Okay. Our biggest problem is the railroad. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, and if you recall, and I'm familiar with the master plan because that was about 
well, Zabo was mayor at the time. That and came even through. before that, I okay. keep telling so, you, there's a plan before so, that with that railroad. I think we actually have a copy flowing around. The Eurosec plan? Do you have the Eurosec <laughs> plan yeah, from the 90s? No, that one, no. Yeah. But, um, no one seems to listen to me. There's a big plan from yeah. the 90s. It's in the basement. Of the senior <laughs> center. Yes, we know. So if you recall, about five years ago, six <coughs> years ago, I came up with the restriping design on 202 that on is Valley correct. Valley Road. We met with Rebecca. We met with the county, the chief at the time, and Frank Fiore. Um, debated it, discussed it. There were some decent ideas. In fact, there was enough room, if I remember, to make a left-hand turn into Enterprise, shifting that over that would match the left-hand turn coming southbound to go into Yopo. Would shift those people over because that was tying up the traffic that was trying to come down. Okay. I've discussed that with Frank Fury. So so I guess what I'm doing at this point because um, I know it's late in the game, but I'm asking for that information to be resurrected. I have that I do everything in Excel, so I actually have the line drawings and everything Speak else from to that. The team. Yeah, and <coughs> well, as part of what you're doing, that you know, if you're talking about that section from Oak Down you know, bicycle lane going there. How are people going to get there? I mean, you've got four parking spots. People have to get away to congregate in that area, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to think about, are they going to park in Walgreens and walk across the street? <coughs> Things of that nature, okay? Mike, who's a member of the team? Yeah, I want to, I want to address that, that aspect of it. No mind. Please. Okay. Mike Whitey on 34 Hopper Street, member of the team. Um, Michael makes some great points, but, but the big thing with this park, to realize, it's 75% aesthetics, 25% <coughs> usable. You're not going to be pulling, people aren't going to be pulling in there and playing ball or families coming in there for, for outings. It's really aesthetics. Okay. The benches and all are nice for people who work in the area, grab a sandwich at, and come across the street and sitting at the bench. And people walking by and people might go for long walks on River Pro Valley Road, need a little breather, <laughs> yes. can't, can't stop. Same thing with Stuart Woods. Correct. That's, that's really, it's really more aesthetics. We're looking, as, as Kevin so eloquently, eloquently put, it's, 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 it's a gateway to the town. People come to the town and boom, they see all this green, all this, these nice designs that, uh, that appear and put together. You're right, there's nothing there to really... It's, it's really not, people are going to be pulling, right. I mean, we have the parking spots there, yeah, but people aren't going to be really be pulling it out. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a really it's important a aspect. Of, you know. Yeah, it's a showcase, yeah. yeah. If I may, thank you for bringing it up. <clears throat> the, the design calls for the entrance of the station park, as we see on the board here. However, the question is, as I understand it, what about Dr. Cook's office? What about Enterprise? That can be accessed from the left side of those offices, off of Rampart Valley Road, north or south. They can pull into the parking, public parking spot, all right, across from, from the uh, Chopper's building, okay? <laughs> Chopper Park there, building. go into it's use Enterprise, like so on and so <laughs> forth. Dr. Cook's Corvette cool, space will be preserved. <laughs> that was a joke from last night. Uh, and, and, and they have access to the building completely. So I appreciate your concerns, but I think this chart kind of addresses them. Yeah, so there is a, so it's not an exit only out of yeah. the- No, right. no, so it's, 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 it's either way. way. And, you, and the only thing that, again, just keep in mind, when traffic backs up on there because somebody's waiting to make a left into that public parking area, Okay, it stops everybody before him. And I know there's they a stop plan. at the light. I mean, it's well, but if, if we make the left hand turn, shift over to go in enterprise. You know what, right. Mike? We cannot do anything without the county. Approval. No, no, that's fine. They're going to be meeting with the county. But Maybe yeah, we could go yeah. to that. And meeting. that's all I'm asking you to look at. It. Yeah, I mean, to me, a left hand turn to go into enterprise, it, it, it's enterprise. It's not like there's 100 cars going there a day. I don't think it's that big a deal. I think if they make the left prior to that in actually against the wall. Chopper's area, I mean, we could even, this, this area here for the, for the park, we could reduce the parking spots to, to, to none if we wanted to. Right. Because, like, like I'm thinking of the, the park currently in, in Hackensack, right, that uh, memorializes the five firefighters that were killed in Hackensack Ford. There's not a parking spot there. It's a passive park. Mm -hmm. That's all this is. It's for aesthetics. People walking by, people, Dr. Cook's office, go out, have lunch. It's not a place to bring your kids. There's no swing set and things like that. If you're walking by, it's a it's a beautification of the city entrance. That's really Nat, what it's for. Uh, Councilman, not to your point. Station Park is a pedestrian park, and, and the point was made that we don't expect we have five 
uh, four, four or five parking spaces there, really as an accommodation to n nothing we expect as a practical matter. Okay, we don't expect <coughs> cars going in there, a bunch of kids jumping out and going to the park. We honestly don't. And so it's really more of an accommodation for nothing than, than anything else. And or maintenance. You know, some people when they come to the same park. Absolutely. Okay, so it's a pedestrian park and designed and thought of as a pedestrian park. And, and, and having the space for handicap is, is great. So, be, yes. you know, they can't yes. obviously walk to it. They're going to pull in and be able to leave the car there and then go. Absolutely. Park. Are we bike racks there? Oh, yeah, bike racks. Yeah. We got bike rack in there. Yeah. And we got room for two charging stations. <laughs> <laughs> so that's six parking spots. Then. Thank you. I just think if we can relook at that left-hand turn design that we had out there that was being considered. I I've tried that. I, I've talked, talked to Frank Fiore and he just ignores me. But uh, we need the county. <laughs> well, I'm dealing with the I county. I think you said it right. Frank, you need to, that's what you Frank need to I'm forgetting about Thank you. Mike, can you send me that? What you're yeah, what I'll do is um, I'll look the file up and then I'll uh, email it out to mayor and council. Yeah. Great, thank and you. And then uh, it'll show you all the way from Oak Street and bicycle uh, sections all the way down, or bike path, or um, six foot or five foot <coughs> all the way down. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you everybody. Right. Anybody else? Oh, oh, Chop is getting up. One minute. What? Mayor. Did you want to speak? No, I just said, sure. oh. Frank Fiori's done May 31st. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mayor. Last longer. Mayor, can I just ask one question? Of course. Yes. Mr. Heffernan, just, just a question for you. Sure. And I know that the it's important to keep the inertia going on this program, this project. So is it my understanding that the park itself can stand alone without any of the other work going on downtown to really act as that catalyst? Well, thank you for asking that question. It's a good, very good one. The, the design of the park is by itself. The grant and the vision is the entire area of downtown as we've spoken. Uh, we recognize that, yes, three years, sewers <laughs> we're coming through. Well. I have an article from 1954. I have an article from 1954 talking about this in Oakland. If it's going to be two or three years, or five or ten or twenty years, we don't know. Okay. So this design and the plan is modular. Station Park can exist and should you know happen as soon as possible. The other elements, such as the trees, the pavers, the walkways, the lights for downtown, okay, will come after the sewers. If the decision is made that we want to do it twice, fine. Okay, you pay for it twice, fine. But no, it's modular and downtown development, with the possible exclusion of the electronic bulletin board, mm, okay, which we need. You know, uh, it's, they Absolutely. stand on their own. Absolutely. The streetscape itself, it is can follow. Mm -hmm. okay. I hope that answers your question. It did, thank you, and is it safe to say then that the station park happens that the owner of the seal parking seals shopping center will do his part immediately or yes sir i couldn't get him to say that in writing okay <laughs> but i mean that's the implication and that's but sandra who's on your team can <laughs> <laughs> and just just one other comment sir um just because uh, when i was working out in newark and they had done a similar streetscape project and when they did their crosswalks they put in bricks and pavers and I can tell you that after the first winter, it was chewed up, it was chewed up and there were entire blocks that were missing. So what they did is they came back and they put stamped concrete in place to, to mm -hmm. address All you have that. to do is ride through Round River Reserve on top, Cotswold. Yeah. Cots yeah. Cots right. so Same that, thing. Mm -hmm. The block. That's all. Yeah. Okay. But thank you, Kevin. I think it's, it's a terrific idea. Okay. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin, and the entire team. And that was a very nice presentation. Thank you. I just, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for the presentation. Very, very nice. Um, it's, uh, thank you for all the work that, you, that the whole team is doing. Uh, the one thing that I, I thought of that, I don't know if any of you guys thought about it, I, I thought it might be cool if you had maybe a, a time capsule by the, either the flagpole or the, or the clock. You, you might get the schools in, involved in doing something like that. Um, I love the idea. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Right. At this time, we have to have um, a public hearing on the application for the Bergen County Open Space Grant for the roller hockey rink. And it is, um, you can be heard concerning the borough's application to the Bergen County Open Space Recreation Farmland and Historic Preservation Trust Fund Grant Program, Park Improvement Program, 
requesting funding to rebuild the roller hockey ring at the Oakland Recreation Complex. So this is a public hearing. Is the motion to open to the public? So sure. moved. Second? Second, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does anyone wish to speak? I'm not repeating the name of the grant again. Does anybody wish to, you want to speak? Oh, Mike, please. Yes. You know which grant I'm talking about. Yes, the uh, Bergen County one Chief Smith. Right. <laughs> um, this is regarding the roller hockey rink. And you have to give your name and... Mike Guadagnino, 34 Hopper Street, chair of the Recreation Commission, which we're dealing with this, uh, this rink issue. Um, big thing is to, to the town understand, we are looking to do this rink with no taxpayer dollars, like Station Park, like Great Oak Park. So it's taking a little while. Some of the uh, folks are a little antsy. They want this rink done sooner rather than later. But to go through the process and getting these grants, it's going to just take a little bit of time. So this is what the first grant that we're applying for is the Bergen County Open Space Grant. Right. And uh, we're asking support for this so we can, this, hopefully this will give us half, and we're looking at the half from another grant. And then target date would be to get the rink redone for the 2019 season. It's not going to be done this season. Right. Thank you. Okay. And Mayor, I just want to give some background on it also, just for the public, just to reiterate. What happened was, several years ago, uh, the town had put money into rehabilitating a rink. And what we learned was the fact that it was basically at the end of this life cycle, the asphalt, the boards, everything could not be saved, which required an entire rebuild of the rink. Right. Just to also clarify, the town didn't actually put any money into it. The, um, the vendor really didn't do what he was supposed to do. Right. And we didn't realize the damage, so the vendor actually just walked away. So we actually have some money put away that was other grant money and trust money, not open taxpayer dollars. That was, that was meant, earmarked for that project a year and a half or so ago. Correct. And I can tell you also that uh, I am also hearing from residents that have children that are in the program uh, and they're very anxious to see that this job gets completed. And Mike, I think it's also important to point out the fact that because we have this, this hockey rink, that there's a lot of other outside interests from other communities that also want to have their children come down and participate as well. Could you expand on yes, that? Yes, we, we, we have a very large hockey program, roller hockey program, that um, Andy Haas helped build up, and now Vivian now runs the program. Right. It's really big. And it's actually, it, it's a shame because it's kind of like stalled and it's kind of hurting a bit having our program. We, we, know, we go and play in Wyckoff. Wyckoff has been nice to allow us to use their rink, but it's, um, it's, it's hurt, it is hurting the program. So our program being as large as it is, we actually attract um, players from Mawa, some from Patterson, some other inner cities. There might be a player here or there who their, their town doesn't have a roller hockey program. So we gladly take them in, into our program, and, and they, they participate in our roller hockey program. So it's, but, but this, pro, this issue is, is actually, it, it was tolerated last year. It's going to be more difficult this year, but I think people understand we're doing this without taxpayer dollars, and we're going to put a, a beautiful rink down that will take a couple generations to allow them to play roller hockey. But the high school uses the program. We have adults who use the program. We have adult roller rink. Summer camp uses, uses the, the rink. Um, this rink gets a lot of use, I mean, a lot, a lot of use. Did, and, um, have, have you contacted the NHL at all? I mean, I know N N NHL... Vivian has, yeah. and I believe the issue was that we're not... Th one of the problems I have, we're not a low-income town. Okay. And it just, unfortunately, that, that's, that's, that's actually one of the problems I run to with my grants for Great Oak Park, that yeah. Oakland is considered affluent, and therefore... Or, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm sure she... Uh, but um, either the NHL or, or the Devils specifically, you know, because I've heard that they that they you know donate other things, you know, and, and do stuff like that. So. Knowing Vivian King, She's who cold. is behind this, Vivian's a phenomenal she is job. Very, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Vivian, mm -hmm. for the work you do. Yes, she really, she's really doing a She does a good job, job with this, mm -hmm. and it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Just by sure. having this hearing, we had to have this hearing in order to. Um, uh, to, build, to satisfy the application for the grant. Mm -hmm. Mike, how old is the rink? The rink, this used to be, this predates me, but it used to be a basketball court. 2001? 2001-ish. And it's actually, I got a photo it's of... 20 um, years, easy. I'm sorry? It's 20 years, easy. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and it was, and it didn't... I mean, my later. son's 33. And I gotta tell you something, I was involved in it because we had local 164 electricians donate a whole weekend of time pulling all the wires and erecting the uh, the light poles, must go lights, mm -hmm. uh, and, at that time. Yeah. So it was a, a labor of love back then, too. We did a real good job because when we redid the lights a few years ago, all they did was just change pretty much the tops. They didn't even have to, to rip them out like exactly. the other ones. But yeah. the Macadam, uh, I think it's, it was not replaced when they did the roller hockey. They kind of just 
the little touching up. So it's it's the, exactly. the cracks are, are really it's dangerous. It's, it's dangerous because you got yeah. yeah. It, it, it's pushed its life, and we probably push it a little bit further. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a Thanks. tough job to do because I did one in Garfield at Dennis Lake Park. We put a roller hockey rink in there. And it's very tough to get that. Um, it's going to be smooth. Smooth, Perfect. and also Perfect. just to shed water and ice mm -hmm. in the wintertime uh, to make sure all that works yeah. right. Because we had to have the contractor come right. back. Thank you. Many times. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this grant? Motion to close? So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. So now what do we do? That's we it. We That's it. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, do the minutes and send them in uh, as required by the grant application. Great. Oh, well, um, they just need a copy of the minutes for that? Okay. All right, we have resolutions. Mayor, if, if we could just make a slight uh, change to the order of the agenda. Uh, Officer Docker is here to talk with the council about the radio project. It's a work session item. I was wondering why he was sitting here. Yeah, so if, if we could just move that up uh, and take that item now and go back to the regular order. Yes. yes. I think I don't think anybody would mind. So would you want to come? We're just modifying our agenda slightly. This is under work session items. It's the radio project. Hey, Don. Tech of Doc from the Oakland Police. Uh, I've been working on the radio project since approximately 2011. Uh, Councilman Knapp was part of the uh, committee at the time, as well as the former chief that started this project. Uh, to give you some history, of what we've spent time and making sure we make the right choices for the police department and keeping the financial aspect as down <coughs> as possible. Um, so the history of the police radio system is we're operating on a low band radio system and over the years there's been modifications. Um, one of the modifications based on the topography of Oakland and the hills and valleys we added repeater systems in the police vehicles. And what that means is um, the officers wear a high band radio that basically gets repeated from the police vehicle back to headquarters so that we have a better coverage of, so the officers can communicate back and forth from headquarters. So if the car is turned off, they can't communicate. Correct. So some of the things that we've had is you have to leave the car operating or you have a dead battery. Um, there's a distance issue. I've, I've encountered it myself. We're looking for a suicidal party in the woods and the distance between our car and my radio exceeded and I could not communicate to headquarters while we're searching for that party. Um, training aspects was a little pitfall too. During my training as a, uh, a new officer, um, I uh, was with the officer and when the car repeats, it does not repeat. So if two officers are in the same car, they put it on that car number. The repeater will repeat whatever each officer from that car will say, but that other officer on the same car will not hear. So I was in the process of tracking a suspect and we got separated. And my supervising officer at the time didn't know where I was and to communicate. So that was a s real safety aspect of that system. The system has served the boroughs well. It's approximately 30 to 40 years old. So uh, we started the process. <coughs> the first process was looking at rebuilding the system. Uh, due to the fact that we were late in the game and how many agencies and towns are in Bergen County, there was limited frequencies we could get. We did obtain several frequencies, but um, due to other towns miles away, we had to do a limited tower wattage, basically how far we could broadcast. That caused an issue with the fact that we needed seven radio towers, which are very expensive. We were looking at 1.3 to 1.5 million dollars for the infrastructure and not only was that bad enough the coverage of Oakland was a lot less than what we had now 
I could go to Hackensack on a low band and communicate to headquarters when we're transporting prisoners to Oakland. This system was basically when you got on the outbursts, uh, the outside uh, areas, Franklin Lakes, uh, Ringwood, Wanakue, you could not communicate back to Oakland. It would be just basically a system that's covered by Oakland. So based on the cost and the, the coverage, we felt that that wasn't the right path. So we started looking at um, systems, Bergen County was one of them, and the state system, which allowed you to use the infrastructure so the borough wouldn't have to pay the cost of maintaining that it, the, the towers and updating them and keeping them up, uh, up to par. So we looked at the coverage issues. Now obviously Bergen County, we looked at them first because of interoperability. Um, there were a couple issues that we had. Um, they were on a system where uh, they, they basically, uh, we run into the uh, position where Oakland is surrounded by a good portion of Passaic County. So the coverage past the Passaic County borders, Ringwood, Wanakue, we weren't able to communicate back to headquarters. Um, we also uh, did what we call a grid testing. And I'll get into that in a minute. Um, and the other thing was on the, the, uh, the plan was there was an aspect of possibly taking that system away. It's called T-banding. They were on a frequency that potentially might get taken away. It wasn't 100%. Um, so we got the state system. Me and Councilman Knapp went through, basically we grabbed the coverage maps. The county provided us the map coverages for Oakland and the state covered the, uh, gave us the coverage maps. And we strategically picked the uh, areas of concern. So there was spots on either the state or the county that were less covered. We spe specifically went to those locations to make sure the coverage was there. And the state system outperformed the county system. There were, there were a lot of areas of concern on the county that we just didn't want to, we didn't feel comfortable with it. So we, we got to the project where we decided that the state was the best system for Oakland. And we went through uh, back and forth with the fire, first aid, police, DPW, um, how many radios we wanted. And uh, Councilman Kamala was very good at helping us uh, chew down the, the budget. Uh, we got it down to a very low number, even though it's, a, it's still a significant amount, but not where we were starting out off of building our system. It was $1.5 million. So that's what you have in front of you is we're looking to purchase through Motorola, through the county, uh, the state bid, um, portable radios, um, mobile radios. Some, the desks will be completely updated. That's been well overdue. Um, some redundancy at the firehouse um, and some interoperability for the police vehicles, which is, we've, we've been long overdue. The police cars, do the frequencies that other towns have gotten to, we haven't had the ability to listen to Franklin Lakes, Ringwood. And that, that's an officer safety thing for them, as well as us going into their town, they can hear us. So this is a total benefit for the police department and uh, making the public more safe with the system. It, it, you said it's, it's Motorola slash Goosetown? Goose Town is our radio provider. But so on the first page, you rejected them. First page, I no. I, I think what uh, the officer was referring to when we were going through the planning process for this, we asked Goose Town to take a look at uh, if we were to build out our own system on low band, what would that cost be? Uh, they'd come back with a range of 1.2 to 1.7 million dollars. Uh, however, as part of this project now. Um, that's being recommended, Goose Town would do a portion of the work. They would be providing the uh, recording system, a couple of the antennas, uh, and some of the radios as well, the small. Correct. They, they would be, they, they, they're going to do some of the redundancy projects that we have that would be cheaper than going through the Motorola process. We right. tried to get the, the... So this is the one the, that's 544? The 540,000 is for the mobile radios and the desk. 
There, there's uh, two locations at the desk, main and auxiliary. Portables. And then, um, yeah, the portables as well. And then Go Goose Town's doing a redundant control station, which means basically a lot of this stuff is computer related. Um, we wanted a redundancy there, so we put in a basically a glorified radio that would be in a car that's modified to work at the desk. So if the computers failed, we would be still able to operate uh, with that, that system. That system is also being installed at Firehouse Number 1, which is a, an emergency plan that's our secondary desk area if something were to happen at this, this building where we cannot operate there. So total system cost, and, state, uh, and Keith, I think you had indicated that uh, the state was willing to waive the one-time implementation fees? Correct. Associated with moving over to their system? Right, okay. okay. So what you essentially have is the Motorola proposal for 544000 in change. Uh, the total of the Goose Town work um, would be 56000 in change, and the total comes to 601000 in change for the project. Uh, and I just want to reiterate, this is something that uh, went through several different iterations and a lot of discussion over project requirements and best approaches and uh, what, you know, really trying to nail down the scope of what we were trying to achieve. It wasn't necessarily just about replacing obsolete equipment, but also how do we, you know, address operational issues here and kind of future-proof uh, with where we think technology is going. I think the has done, you know, collectively an outstanding job trying to do this for really as, uh, you know, as economical a price as possible given the cost of some of this technology. How, how are we funding this? Uh, this is out of the existing bond ordinance authorizations. So this has been authorized? Funding was put in place a while ago for this, realizing that we needed to embark on this project. More than the 601, though, didn't we? Uh, it's right about that. Right, right, about right, that. That, right in that point. Uh, Keith, I just for the edification of the people out in, in the community, I'm sure you've done all the research on finding out if Homeland Security grants would be available for a project like this? We've done whatever we could to keep the budget down, as far as I'm aware of. Uh, we, I, I could probably address that. One okay. of the things we looked at, John, was we went to the prosecutor's office, see if there are any funds that we can utilize from them. Uh, we did have Marlene take a look at this as well, our grant writer. Uh, right. She said there was nothing available at this time. Um, so, I mean, I, I think we've really turned every stone over to get the best value proposition that we can for this. And, and I just want to uh, make sure you answer your question first before you go on. Oh, yeah. 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 I just want to make, I, and I, I'm sure you did it. Yeah. I just want to, I'm sure people are home saying, did they try to get any grants? I know, I was right. thinking that myself. And, and you just try to ask the questions that you would think the residents would ask. So that's why I posed it. And, and John, just saying also, uh, we have beat up the vendor pretty good. Uh, we've, we're up to version number eight at this point, um, and we've really uh, gone out of our way to really bring this down within budget and really beat up the vendor to make this thing happen. And, you know, there's a lot of out-of-the-box thinking taking place by Councilman Matt, Keith, myself, and the rest of the committee to, to get us where we are today. A lot of discounts were taken. Right? Yes. Yeah. Quite a few discounts. Yep. They gave us a percentage above state contract that I've seen in similar sized towns that's higher than what those towns receive. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we also did, Pat, was um, we were also working with the <coughs> state of New Jersey Motorola purchasing agent, and he was working with us and giving us guidance on how to work with Motorola on this. And, and, you know, and we've, all, we've taken all the quotes that we've gotten, sent them down to Trenton for them to review. They have found mistakes in the quotes for this that Motorola sent back. So, I mean, we've, uh, we've gone through it. We've crossed every T and dotted every I you know, even work with state of New Jersey procurement on this. I, I, I know you've had numerous, numerous meetings regarding this. Yeah. And I also want to say that, you know, as Keith pointed out, I mean, the real value proposition here is, I mean, was the due diligence that took place. And, and at the end of the day, it's putting Oakland in a position of technology, which is a really a shared technology with the state of New Jersey. So we are getting out of the infrastructure business. So we don't want to sit there and have take care of the radio network and every all that piece that now falls on the state of New Jersey. So we're, we're riding on their network, and it's really equivalent to having a cellular phone. You subscribe to Verizon or AT&T, and they take care of the communication. So this police radio system is basically the same model as that. So we're really uh, taking advantage of that. Also, it future proofs us, as Keith said, it takes care of the interoperability piece. And some of the, the 
forward-looking thinking that went into this is if the county ever gets their act together, we could possibly move over to the county, so we're not locked into just one service provider on this. Oh, Correct. I thank you. I thank you so much. I also thank Councilman Knapp and Councilman Kumala, yeah. who has expertise in, in radios. Big job. Big yes, job. Uh, thank Big you job. both, Councilman, because um, some of us could not offer any expertise in radio. I, I always wanted to find out where the flux to it. capacitor is going to be. But. Excuse me? <laughs> That's why we had Councilman so, Knapp and Councilman Kumala yeah. working with Keith. It's on the DeLorean. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Any, any, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All right. We have resolutions. And um, if there's none that anybody wishes to pull out, we'll do it as consent agenda. A, a resolution 18229 is to change the signatory on Senior Center Petty Cash Account. It used to be Rose Burek, who has retired. It's now Ariel Preciados, who is our, um, I, is our new senior director and bonded for uh, up to the amount of a thousand. 18242 hiring public works laborer is a vacant position, Department of Public Works. Jonathan Pena will be appointed full-time vacancy effective Monday, July 2nd, 2018 at a salary of 35603 18243 increase hours to full-time Maricel Gayton. She's uh, to be a full-time court clerk which is very nice, it's due to increased caseload in our courts. And this will be an annual salary at $35,344, effective Monday, July 2nd, 2018. Authorized tax appeal settlement 40, this is um, resolution 18244, authorized tax appeal settlement at 40 Potash Road. It's recommended settlement to the litigation, and it is. 40 Potash Associates LLC versus Oakland, tax year 2010, complaint will be withdrawn. Assessment of 13,688,900 will remain intact. Tax years 2011-2012, complaints will be withdrawn. Assessments 12,084,100, 12,084,100, will remain intact. Tax. 2013 assessment of 12 million 84,100 will be reduced to 10 thousand will be reduced to 10 million 132,600 the tax years 2014 2015 2016 assessment of 12 million 84,100 will be reduced to 9 million 584,100 the tax years 2017 2018 the complaints will be withdrawn and the assessments of 12,084,100 will remain intact resulting in a total refund of 250,000 and it will be by way of credits for future tax bills and quarterly amounts of $15,625 beginning August 1st, 2018 continuing till May 1st, 2022 without interest to the taxpayer. 18245 hire temporary part-time help for the tax office. Deborah Benin, that's her name, Benigno. Benigno. You say it, yes. Benigno. Thank you. <laughs> and it will be $12, $25 per hour, not to exceed 24 hours, effective May, Monday, July 2nd. 18246, it is a resolution authorized Agnoli Engineering um, to undertake a Ramapo River restoration project. The proposal is dated June 12, 2018, not to exceed $6,825. And all the paperwork is attached. And um, 247, is it a refund? Do we have it? Res sorry, resolution 218-247 is authorized to refund the recreation fees. And this is a refund of summer camp can't speak anymore. Registration fees in the amount of $430. And it is to Angela Schmaltz for Ithaca Avenue, a refund of $430.
And you wish to put, uh, and 18248 is removed. That was from last council meeting. That's an error on the agenda. Is there a motion? So is there any you wish second. to pull out? Then a motion for the consent agenda. So moved. Second. second. You got the second? Roll call. I have second. Is second. <laughs> Councilman Bialy. Yes. Councilman Knapp. Yes. Councilman Kamala. Yes. Councilman Levy. Yes. Councilman Pignatelli. Yes. Councilman Chalamini. Yes. Okay. Ordinances introduction 18 bond 770 2018. Carry that to meeting. Carried. That's off. That's off. Off. <coughs> okay. Bond 18 bond 771. Both are off. No resolution. Okay. Okay, work session rate, um, uh, uh, Mr. Kunz. Urging uh, amendments so set S716, S477, and S1766. Yeah, so uh, one workshop item uh, besides the radio project which we already heard about. Uh, and this I just wanted to alert you to several pieces of legislation making their way through uh, the state legislature uh, that would impact municipalities collectively and the uh, cost for liability insurance uh, and potential liability. Uh, they are 716, uh, S-477, and S-1766. I'll briefly describe each in turn. Uh, and we were alerted to these, uh, these bills by the Municipal Excess Liability and Joint Insurance Fund, of which we are a member, uh, and also, I believe, in municipalities. First one, S-716. Uh, something that has been floating around now, I think, in several different sessions of the legislature. Um, and this one would create what's called a rebuttable presumption uh, that cancer among public safety workers is caused by their occupation. So essentially, it would put the onus on uh, municipalities as the employer uh, or the, the agency um, to rebut that presumption based on what's the language in the law, clear and convincing. Uh, evidence, uh, which moves away from uh, the standard used in most <coughs> other states. As a matter of fact, I think there's only one other state that uses the clear and convincing language. Everybody else kind of uses the preponderance of the evidence standard. So the concern here, uh, by by doing this, uh, the way the bill is written, uh, is it would potentially cause an increase uh, to liability workers' compensation costs in the state somewhere between 40 million and 218 million. Uh, depending on the number of volunteers that would uh, invoke this legislation for any cancers they got in the future. So uh, the League and the MEL uh, are proposing certain amendments to the legislation to address some of the issues that we see with it, uh, where we still recognize the fact that there are certain situations uh, where uh, public safety workers are endangered, firefighters especially, and exposed to more carcinogens. Uh, without something that would break the bank. Specifically, uh, they'd like to move back to the uh, preponderance of the evidence standard. Uh, they'd like to put a statute of limitations into the bill so that when uh, these workers hit 65, anything would go over to Medicare the way it normally would. Otherwise, there's essentially fee shifting from the federal government to the state government to the municipalities. Um, and also considering uh, amending the legislation uh, with a separate fund for volunteers. Uh, anyway, you have a, a resolution or a proposed resolution that goes point by point uh, with all of that uh, in terms of what those amendments would be. All right, the second uh, piece of legislation, which is S-477, uh, is removes the statute of limitations in certain civil actions for sexual abuse, expands categories of defendants liable in such actions. Um, the, this is actually, I think, rather noble legislation, but what uh, the League and the Mellon are pointing out is that it's overly broad and uh, they're looking for a statute of limitations for public entities, not for the individual, but for public entities to limit our liability from the current two years to seven years. Uh, and finally, um, Right now, uh, it was in S1766, uh, that would expand what you can get damages for uh, with torts to include emotional distress. Right now, uh, that isn't uh, you know, basically awards for that. Uh, municipalities are exempt under Title 59. 
uh, and we would like to see an amendment to the existing language to keep that uh, exemption in place. Uh, so those are the recommendations uh, from the, the MEL, our joint insurance fund, uh, as well as the League of Municipalities for your consideration if you want to go on record and do a resolution uh, asking the legislature to amend these three bills. Any comments? All right, well, more on the agenda for next okay. month, Thank next you. meeting. Yes. Not, not, not nearly as interesting as Station Park and <laughs> other topics, but uh, okay. one that's kind of important this week. New business. Thank we'll you. start down at your end. Uh, um, well, does anybody have any new business? If not, Councilman Talamini, Council Reports. Uh, council reports. I just first, I'd like to just say thank you to everybody that uh, wished me well. Uh, for if you don't know, I had uh, a little problem with my heart, and uh, so I'm I'm as good as I could be right now. <laughs> uh, but thank you to everyone that uh, wished me well. Um, because I was in the hospital, I, I didn't attend the last uh, public events meeting, but uh, they they did a great job of explaining what they do. And again, we always need. Um, uh, members at the public events, uh, so if, if you could uh, join the committee, that would that would be great. Looking forward to seeing you at the the Halloween parade. Um, schools, uh, they they graduated. I, I also missed that because I was in the hospital. Uh, but uh, uh, and I, I know we have set up a, a meeting between uh, the the board and uh, the the mayor. July sixteenth. Some things. Uh, that's it. Well, once again, thank you to everybody who uh, wished me well. It's nice to know you have friends. Thank you. Councilman? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just uh, tomorrow there's going to be a celebration down at the rec field for uh, uh, two gentlemen, Hank Roth and Chris Maruglia. I think I pronounced it properly. Uh, they're going to be Maragulia. inducted into the SAO Hall of Fame. Even I got the name right, Maragulia. Maragulia, yeah. <laughs> At 7 p.m. tomorrow down by the Danny D. Building. It's going to be great to uh, show uh, your support for these two gentlemen. Also, the library. Uh, oh, by the way, I was told that if it rains, it'll be, be in, inside. It'll be in the Danny D. Building, correct. Uh, also, uh, on the library, the good news is uh, they're starting to work through the punch list items right now. Uh, so they're going to be repainting downstairs, uh, fixing some holes. Obviously, the big thing is really fixing the doors up front. Uh, we're expecting the, the rest of the furniture to be delivered sometime mid to late July. So uh, things are really uh, looking up over there. As I stated before, we're looking at a September grand opening of the library. And just so you know, I did my first wedding in the beam room. The, the oh, new, but it's not really finished yet. But I did a wedding, I officiated at a wedding yesterday, and I said to them, um, we were going to do it in a municipal building, and I said, you know what, we could go back to the green room, because that's where all the donations go, and um, it was exciting. I said, you are the first couple getting married in the new, newly renovated building. And also, Mayor, I just want to expand on the DOT meeting that took place last Friday. Oh, going back to the library, one more thing. Okay. What about the Eagle Scout? Is he going to present the second Eagle Scout? They want to do a project around the library? I haven't heard anything. Oh, that. okay. I haven't heard anything All about right. that at this point. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I just want to expand on the uh, DOT meeting that took place last Friday. Uh, I just certainly want to thank uh, Assemblyman Off for getting them engaged on our behalf. Uh, as, as the mayor stated, uh, we did have a situation on the highway a month, a month ago uh, where one of our fire pieces of fire apparatus got hit, which we use in a way to protect our firefighters who are working on the highway. There have been multiple accidents up there. And also, one of the, a lot of the issues they also address were the fact that there's flooding on the highway, so the DOT is going to work on cleaning out the storm drains. Uh, the overall condition of the highway, when we took the tour, when you get into Franklin Lakes off of 287, it's clean all the way down to Mawa. As soon as you hit Oakland, there's just garbage everywhere. There's, uh, you know, it, you know it, it just looks terrible. A lot of debris. A lot of debris in the roadway. And as soon as you want to keep, once again, it cleared up. So uh, well, I think we've got their attention to come and really focus on Oakland. Uh, one of the issues the mayor was also talking about is the fact that the lights that are on Route 202, uh, DOT is going to go back and they are going to revisit what they can do for the timing of the lights as far as what they can possibly do to alleviate some of the traffic issues. Uh, the mayor also reiterated the fact that uh, the right turn lane arrow coming off of West Oakland Ave, they're looking to that. We also put on the, the agenda um, Allen and Brook. There's a lot of water runoff from the highway, and it's creating a problem with the properties 
washing out downstream from the Alleman Brook. So they're also going to be looking at that. At least you know we put that on the table, and, and also brought, we also asked them to look into the amount of salt that they're also putting on the highway so that we can protect our aquifer here in town. So the good news is we are expecting an answer back from DOT uh, in the next week or so about the safety aspect and certain groups will be going down to Trenton to meet with DOT on the, the uh, other five, six issues that we discussed. So it was a very productive meeting and hopefully we'll get some resolution on behalf of the state. Thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, senior news, um, again, we welcome uh, Ariel Presidio. Uh, to our senior center as a new director. I've received a few emails from the seniors. They're very happy with the choice that was made and she's hitting the ground running and getting new programs and trips going for the seniors. Um, the July calendar is out and uh, Thursday, July 5th from 12 to 2 is going to be movie day. Uh, Thursday, July 19th, 1 p.m. will be bingo and it'll be a dollar a card. Uh, there'll be a trip on August the 2nd, Sands Casino. Uh, it's $10 a person. You get $20 in slot play and $5 food voucher. Um, the Senior Club, they're having a Thursday, July 12th at, one, at 11 a.m. They're having a club picnic. And on Thursday, July 26th, they're having a summer, uh, a summer day, summer derby day. Um, also, as the mayor mentioned before, free concert at Thursday, on Thursday, July 19th, 6.30 at the Oakland Rehab Center, uh, 20 Breakneck Road, bring a chair. The Alan Quinn Orchestra will be playing. Uh, DPW, uh, LED lights are currently being installed. That's the 2018 uh, allocation for us. Uh, they, have the, uh, they have the addresses of where we want those lights, so expect to see uh, Rockland in the area installing new ones. Um, obviously, PSE and G gas installation going on the Rampo Valley Road for the next, is it six weeks or eight weeks, Rich? Eight. Six, six to eight. Are six you talking about eight. what's anticipated or what they're saying? Okay, and uh, from the DPW also, um, I, Anthony wanted me to let the residents know that the water department employees and our engineers will be uh, around town inspecting hydrants, valves, and pumping stations. They may also see them carrying GIS equipment and, and magnetic located, locators, which will record the exact location of our entire infrastructure. And this is part of the NJDEP's Water Quality Accountability Act. Uh, and one other thing, the mayor and I both received a call from uh, Congressman uh, Gottheimer's office asking for a possible uh, name to submit as a person uh, uh, who represents uh, the good qualities that it takes to keep a community like ours going. And there's going to be one person nominated from each town. I'm happy to report that we've submitted the name of Roy Balberger, who's been our river uh, keeper and our OEM, I think from the beginning of time, because <laughs> it's the only person I've ever known since I've lived here. Uh, that's the guy. That's the man. So uh, uh, hopefully we'll great choice. Just just uh, keep your eyes on the paper and see uh, the towns and the uh, people who were nominated uh, on for the man of the year, more or less. And that's about all I have, Mayor. Thank, thank you, Councilman. Yes, Mayor. Thank you. I attended the uh, uh, environmental committee uh, meeting last night. Uh, we had a great presentation this evening about the. Uh, charging station uh, grant. Um, we also heard from uh, one of the members about the Renewable Government Energy Aggregation, uh, RGEA. Um, this is, came about by a joint um, a group of people, uh, all the uh, green teams throughout uh, Bergen County. Um, I, this was a, I'm sorry, it was a green team meeting last night, not an environmental commission. I get them mixed up sometimes with people in the same. Uh, this was a green team meeting uh, last night that I went to. 
and uh, they created a, a hub, which is uh, an energy hub, which consists of all the green teams in Bergen County getting together and, and uh, sharing ideas and successful programs that they've had. This RGEA um, program is a joint program with uh, uh, Rockland. Uh, it's a renewable energy group uh, in which um, residents will be able to opt out of once they join it uh, and it would give them savings on their electricity. Oh. So um, uh, that's going to be coming up um, for uh, recommendation from the uh, uh, Green Team to the Borough Council. Mm -hmm. We also had a presentation, um, believe it or not, on styrofoam recycling. Mm. I'm not talking about the styrofoam plates. I'm talking about the bulk styrofoam, like when you get um, a, a shipment of furniture, packing yeah, material. Packing material. Uh, in which uh, uh, they do recycle it and in in, 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 um, make um, molding, crown moldings out so of it. So it's really, you put that, you, where do you put that? Can well, there, there'd be a collection, there'd be a collection. Oh, separate? Separate, yeah, there'd be a collection separately. Um, and uh, they're also going to ask for the uh, council, not right away, but in the future, for us to ban um, the use of styrofoam plates in styrofoam containers. Uh, in what about styrofoam coffee cups? Um, that would also be banned also. Because only 1 to 10 percent of styrofoam is recycled. The rest goes to the landfill. That's why I didn't think it was recyclable. Yeah. So no, the, the bulk, the big, you know, that comes in when, right. you, when you buy a right. computer or something, the big bulk styrofoam, that is recyclable. But not the cups or the plates. That's what they call expanded polystyrene. The packing material they use for the flip phones. Yeah. <laughs> and all phones. <laughs> Did you just say it that? Just, it just hit me what you were saying. Uh, and there are two bills. There are two bills in the New Jersey Senate and Assembly right now to ban uh, styrofoam plates, etc. So what? Are, so that means the stores can't sell it, like Shoprite. No, no, they can sell it. We just, just can't that, use you it. Can't use it. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a business proposition. Yes. <laughs> Great no, we're talking about takeout containers in the in the restaurants, etc., oh. things like that. Wow. Uh, and uh, that that's it for the uh, green team. Uh, however, we are looking for uh, more members. Uh, please. We got if, one tonight. Yeah, if you're interested in yeah, if you're interested in uh, joining the green team, uh, please come to Borough Hall and fill out a uh, uh, volunteer form. What do they call that again? Citizen leadership. Citizen form. leadership form. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I also, uh, I was unable to attend the Board of Health meeting because I went to the public events meeting uh, to... Uh, uh, Can't be everywhere at the same time. I know, time. I know, I know. It's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> but anyway, um, the Board of Health did have a meeting. Uh, and again, they did conduct another hearing of a local food establishment in town. Um, and uh, the establishment came up with a corrective action plan. Oh, good. Yeah, so uh, they're very proactive. The Board of Health is, is very proactive, especially in food uh, safety. Thank you. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman. Wow, I was very comprehensive. Um, well, I could give a report on Station Park, but I think I'd just be playing second fiddle to Kevin. Uh, the Flood Commission will be needing three new members this year. Uh, one of our members has resigned, she's moving, and we have two more that are leaving in December. So if anybody's interested in working on the <coughs> Flood Commission, uh, you can contact she, the Flood Commission on the she, borough website. She sent us an email, a resignation by email. Is that sufficient for you? Okay. So we need uh, volunteers. Please, need if you're interested now. at all, contact us. Please. We'd love to have you on the Flood Commission. Um, Bob? That's it? Yeah. <clears throat> Councilman. Okay. Uh, Great Oak Park. The report I got from Mike was that the uh, lawn has been cleared, and now what they need to do is rake up the uh, tree debris and seed it. And since we're in the uh, hot, hot season, they're going to wait until uh, probably late September before they do the seeding. And then Catherine Bonini, the, the girl who's uh, working on a scout project to place the five Pledge Land signs throughout the park. Um, 
which will identify significant artifacts once they're, the signs are being made now, once they're complete, they will be installed and the plan is to have them done by the end of next month. Um, as far as public safety goes, I give my statistics from the previous month at uh, the second meeting of each month. So for first aid squad, for the month of May, they were, uh, they had 70 calls totaling 150 hours. They had one training which equated to 160 hours with, I guess, all of their members. They spent 1,530 hours on, on duty or on call. They had three standbys for 106 hours, so total, total details for the, for the month were 74 and uh, 1,946 hours volunteered for the month. Year to date, 398 calls and just under 9,000 hours volunteered. For the fire department, they had 45 calls of service in the month of May, totaling 661 man hours, three drills for 132 man hours, one standby for 47 man hours, total 49 uh, calls or details for 840 man hours. Year to date, uh, 229 calls for 7,410 uh, man hours. I just want to point out on May 15th, we had that crazy, bizarre windstorm that blew through town. Mm -hmm. We as a department within four hours had 16 uh, dispatches. And um, so just figure it out. I mean, we did 45 for the month. So that, that was a pretty significant uh, day. We had trees on houses, trees on wires. Once we got cleaned up here in Oakland, we got sent to Walbrook for a structure fire. For the month of May, we had three motor vehicle uh, accidents with entrapments. All parties were extricated um, and no serious injuries, and two of them were, were rollovers. So, you know, between a first aid squad of just under 9,000 and, and the fire department of 7,000 and change, that's quite a few hours year to date so far volunteered to the borough. Police department, uh, for the month of May, 472 motor vehicle stops, 73 school checks, they continue to rise, 45 fire calls, 70 first aid calls, 27 traffic enforcement details, 33 radar details, 53 burglar alarms. That, that blows my mind that we have that many in town. And this, this really surprised me too, 37 motor vehicle accidents just in the month of May. Were they all on the highway or? No, they're all over. So total calls for service for the month of May, 810, and for the year so far, uh, 9,160. Calls? 9,160 calls for the year. Yeah. So far, wow. wow. They average close to 1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. um, it's getting more than that. Yeah. So in addition to that, the captain sent me some certificates uh, of training that some of the members went through. So we have uh, Patrolman Chris Tinio went through his alco testing, and that's a uh, method of determining intoxication for intoxicated drivers. Uh, Officer Harvey went through a animal cruelty class, um, and Dispatcher Kate Foster went through a Narcan uh, rescue class for opioid overdoses. In addition to that, uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Keenan went through a supervision course. Uh, Patrolman McDermott went through two counterterrorism uh, courses, and Patrolman Gaviria went through a um, CGIS recertification class. So good to see a lot of training and things going on there as well. And uh, Municipal Alliance were done for a couple months, and I am done until next month. Thank you. Yeah. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to open to the public. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wish to speak? To close. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bills to be paid. Yes, Aye. thank you, Mayor. Bills to be paid $507,576.51. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Bialy? Yes. Councilman Nass? Yes. Councilman Jamal? Yes. Councilman Levy? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Councilman Tellamy? Yes. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mayor, just one, one so question. Moved. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mayor, just, just one question before we adjourn. Sure. Uh, I just want a question for our borough engineer. Yes. Uh, could we just get an update on Lenape Lane Bridge, where we stand with that? I know the residents are getting a little antsy. 
Uh, Patriots Way. Patriots Way, I'm sorry, yeah. Yes, um, the, I talked with the state DOT, supervising engineer in Newark. I told them to expect the plans uh, this week uh, and to ask them to please expedite them. I've known them my entire career and said, yes, John, we will do that. So the plans will be submitted this week. I gave um, the borough administrator, Rich, an outline of uh, going forward that, so he could um, forward that to the residents of the reserve. Well, they had an, they had an association meeting, so I, I am very thank, you know, thanking you for submitting that because the attorney who represents the association contacts me all the time. And you, you follow through and gave him the updates. So very quickly, we're looking at a one-month review period from the state. At that time, we'll correct any um, revisions that they want to the, for the bridge plans, which should only take about a week. They'll then go out to bid. Uh, we're looking now at uh, late summer. Uh, bids get received over a period of uh, two months. Uh, an award uh, sometime in the fall. Uh, with construction occurring over the winter uh, and into the early spring. Thank you. Thank you. And they, and he has that, the Attorney for the Association. Excuse I know you said it. Thank you. Mayor, just John, I have a question while we're talking about bridges. I was um, doing a little pre-review of the Ramapo River for the restoration project we're going to start. Lampy Lane Bridge is really bad. I mean, we and we've done any work to look at that to see what we what we can do to. I thought it was exactly. Councilman, I was uh, out at the bridge on Monday and Tuesday this week, as you may or may not know. We we're pulling debris out of the river yes. uh, for the free flow, um, and I was uh, paying attention to it, and I was planning on talking to uh, the borough administrator to start thinking about that bridge next. I mean, there's um, holes in the deck that go. Yes, there are. Uh, I would not characterize it, uh, characterize it as being dangerous to the public, but I would say that we should start talking about uh, finding funding and the resources to deal with that bridge next over the next couple of years. We had talked about it a while back. Yeah, we. And it has to be next. Yeah, 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 we, we've we've been in discussions with yeah. the grant committee talking about reaching out to Marlene and start paperwork on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, motion to adjourn. Yeah, because Pat wants to eat, apparently. And you want a pack. And you want a pack. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The meeting is adjourned. The next meeting will be July 11th, 2018. Thank you. Yes, sir. Huh?